Hey guys, what's happening? Kulifrau here coming at you with the top 5 gaming mouse under $50 in 2018. I know searching for a gaming mouse can be really hard sometimes, especially because on paper all of the mice pretty much look the same. It's hard to tell why one is better than the other and what makes it stand out. But I will give you some insight about the mice you can buy right now in 2018. In the last couple of years there has been a trend going on to buy some cheaper mice than before. I know when I bought a mouse 3 years ago, you only had really decent mice if you paid more than $50. But now I'm happy to be able to make a video with the best mice under the $50 price point. And these are really nice mice, so that means the mice technology has really evolved and got a lot cheaper. First off I want to bust the thing that is going on in the mice market and community. A lot of people think the higher the DPI a mouse has, the better the sensor is. But that's actually false. The DPI stands for dots per inch and doesn't really tell you much about the sensor. It is true that sensors with a higher DPI tend to be more accurate, but just thinking that it's better because it has higher DPI is just crazy. Most pro gamers even use the lowest DPI settings, mostly that's around 400 DPI. So this proves the point that you don't need the high DPI. So I hope this helps that out of the way. At the end of the top 5 I will do a detailed side by side comparison and also there will be timestamps for each individual mouse. On the number 5 spot we have the Razer Dead Adder Elite coming in at $50. It is a mouse that is loved in the pro scene, especially in the FPS scene. Razer is known to make nice looking high quality products and the Razer Dead Adder is maybe the best example of that. It is a mouse widely used in esports and all around the gaming community since 2006. This mouse has had a lot of updates over the years, but the fact that it already exists that long is impressive at its own. 2017 Elite rebrand is a really nice version of this mouse. It has a 5G optical sensor and can go up to 16,000 dpi. It is also really ergonomic and durable. It is advertised to be able to take up to 15 million clicks. I have a lot of friends that still have the 2013 Razer Dead Adder or an even older one. It also has a durable braided cable these nice Razer mechanical mouse switches and the Razer Chroma RGB lighting. It has two programmable buttons on the side, two on top and even the left, right and scroll click are fully customizable in their nice Razer Synapse software. The reason this mouse gets the 5th place is because I think Razer hasn't really adapted to the lower budget market. Don't get me wrong, $50 isn't that much for such a great mouse, but without the discount it has right now it would be $17 and for that price I definitely think there are much better alternatives. On number 4 we have the Corsair Harpoon. It is actually the cheapest mouse that Corsair sells at the moment and also the cheapest one in this top 5. It comes in at only $28 and even the full retail price is just $30. Even though it may be the cheapest mouse, it still has a really great value. It has a 6000 dpi optical sensor, it is lightweight, something where a lot of people are looking for these days, and it also has RGB lighting. Another great feature of this mouse is that it does not require any drivers. So you can pre-configure the RGB lighting and the DPI stages and it will all store this on the onboard memory. So if you ever want to switch the mouse to another device, you do not need to first install the drivers and such. It is just plug and play with all of the features you want. It is advertised to be able to handle up to 20 million clicks. And it was for a long time seen as the best budget mouse. It also has 6 fully programmable buttons. Two on the side, one on the top, and the left, right and scroll click are also fully customizable. On number 3 we have the HyperX Pulsefire FPS gaming mouse. You can clearly see for the design they really got a cake from the Razer Dead Adder. A side by side comparison will show that they are almost identical. But this mouse comes in at just $35 with an extra high quality mouse pad. A great deal if you ask me. It also doesn't come with many compromises from the Dead Adder. The only things are that it doesn't come with RGB lighting and the sensor isn't as good. But it still has a great ergonomics and it's lightweight. The sensor can go between 400 and 3200 dpi. It has 6 programmable buttons, again 2 on the side, 1 on the top and the right, left and scroll click are again programmable. It also comes with a braided cable, large feet and nice side grips. Even though it's small price, this gaming mouse is actually really loved in the pro community. More pros tend to go for the pro version, which is $30 more expensive. For that price you get a better sensor, it's actually the same sensor as the dead adder and it also has RGB lighting. But I think the sensor in the non-pro variant is actually good enough for the average high-end gamer. So I think it is smarter to go for the $30 less expensive version. 
On the number 2 spot we have the Logitech G Pro Gaming Mouse. It is actually on the list because it is a crazy good mouse and it's also on a crazy 44% discount right now. You can get this beauty right now for only $39. And that's a crazy price for such a good mouse. The discount can be over soon so you better be quick. The G Pro has a low profile design. I personally really like the design of the scrolling wheel. It also is widely used in the pro scene. It has a great sensor that goes between 200 and 12,000 dpi. And it also has onboard memory to store your settings which makes it easy to switch between devices. And it also has 6 programmable buttons. Again 2 on the side, 1 on the top and the left, right and scroll click. For the number 1 best gaming mouse in my opinion, I choose for the Logitech G502. It is a beastly mouse which is really versatile and customizable. They even went as far to make the weight in the mouse customizable. With the sale that's going on right now, you can get this mouse for $50. It has the same pristine sensor like the Logitech G Pro, that goes between 200 and 12,000 dpi. And it also has RGB backlighting and a great response time. It also has a whopping 11 programmable buttons, on really intuitive places, so you will never press the wrong button or one on accident. The buttons make it a great mouse for MMO gamers or in Fortnite for bunny or walls to your mouse. It's also loved in the pro scene with also Ninja playing with this mouse. So then it has to be good, right? I also have a bonus mouse where I won't talk too much about, but for the people that are on a really tight budget that still want a great mouse, the SteelSeries 100 Gaia Green is a mouse for you. You can get this for just $16 right now. The only real problem with this mouse is that it's ugly for most people and therefore they aren't bought very often and that's why they give a huge sale on this product. So if you want a secondary cheap mouse or if you have a really tight budget then this mouse might be perfect for you if you don't care about the looks of your mouse. For just $16 it's a really solid pickup. Now let's take a look at the comparison of the sensors of the mice. The DPI of the sensor means the dots per inch or the amount of pixels your mouse will travel on your screen when you move it one inch. The IPS and the G on the other hand means the amount of inches your mouse can go per second without losing track by the mouse. 100 IPS is about 2.5 meters per second. The G is for the G-force. It means the amount of acceleration your mouse can handle without losing any tracking. Overall we can see that the Razer and Logitech mice have really nice sensors. The Razer sensor may be the best, but of course there is only so much a sensor can do. Like 16,000 dpi, 400 IPS and 50G is actually really overkill. If you have about 100 IPS and 20G, then you won't probably notice any flaws unless you are a pro. So basically all sensors are about good enough to the point that you won't feel much difference between them. Maybe a little flaw here and there with the harpoon and the pulse fire. But with the other mice you probably won't even notice. If you take a look at some other comparisons, we can see that the G502 has the most buttons for if you want more functionalities bound to your mouse. But most gamers will find two enough. If you take a look at the size and weight of the mice, we can see that the G502 is the biggest and the heaviest mouse. Even at its base weight it is the heaviest of the bunch. The size of the pulse fire and the dead adder are almost identical but the pulse fire weighs a little less. If you want smaller and lighter mice, the G Pro and the Harpoon are the ones for you. The size of the mouse also tells a lot about the grip where it's for. Like the G502, that adder and pulse fire are great for palm grip and the Harpoon is great for claw grip. I would say the G Pro is great for about any grip, but if you have big hands and you want to palm grip it, you might have a problem. Overall I think the G502 is the best pickup for most people with big hands. And for people on the budget I would go for the pulse fire. The extra mouse pad is also a really nice extra. And then at last for people with smaller hands I would go for the G Pro. It's also an excellent mouse. Ok guys that's it. Thanks for watching. The links of all the products featured in this video will be in the description. These are affiliate links so if you buy a product from them they will also help our channel for the same price. If you liked the video, a like would be appreciated. And if you have a friend that is searching for a gaming mouse, maybe share the video. You never know if it helps out. Also, other suggestions or personal experiences with these mice are welcome in the comments. And if you want to see more of us, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We are almost at 200 subscribers, so yeah. Again, thanks for watching. Then we can say, look, let's work this out. And this, this is what I want. And I know what you want. And if we can get that.
that clear, we can work out a reason.